G'day there guys, I'm Sugar. <laughs> G'day there guys, I'm Sugar. G'day there guys, I'm Sugar. Marky actually. Spice, a dash of social anxiety, and everything nice, but I will throw hands if necessary. <laughs> Welcome back to the Marky YouTube channel. We're going to be covering r slash relationship advice today. You heard it first here, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you love this bloody good content, I want you to smack that like button down south, sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, and get ready for some bloody good content. Thank you. Posted by user Terrible Terrible Wed. Titled My best friend, 22 female, is giving up a full ride scholarship to be with her boyfriend of less than three months. Throw away for anonymity reasons. My best friend has a full ride scholarship tuition, rent, books from our university. She's a very book smart girl and has been on the dean's list almost every semester. This is our third year of college. The issue is that she is a gullible person. Even though she's book smart, she'll get caught up in things like multi-level marketing schemes. She will date older men who take advantage of her. Many things like that. While she was home over the summer, she and her old high school crush, 20 male, started hanging out. At the end of the summer, he officially asked her to be his girlfriend. I like the guy, and I think he's better for her than her past flings, but they are getting very serious very fast. Last month, she told me she was thinking about transferring to his university. I told her that was ridiculous as she would give up her scholarship and have to take out loans. Turns out she applied to transfer anyway. Today, she got her acceptance notice and couldn't be more excited. I've already told her that this is a bad idea, but she is so gullible, and her mother is the same way. Her mum thinks this is true love. Two small town lovebirds crossing paths again. My roommate keeps saying that this is just like her parents' romance, and she needs to give this relationship everything. Oh, her parents are divorced by the way. Is there anything I can say or do to help her reconsider? I've already voiced my opinions once, and it didn't do anything. If it were me... I would definitely try and intervene where I could in person and with that girl's parents. It may be too late for changing it at this point, unfortunately, and changing her mind seems near impossible. This is one of those cases where you don't realize what you had till it's gone, and I think this girl is in for a very, very rude awakening when she comes out on the other side of all of this. As tragic as it is to watch these things happen, Sometimes people just have to learn the hard way, I guess. Now in the comments, Miss Trixie says, While your friend is clearly making a bad decision, it's her bad decision to make. If you feel you must, have another talk with her, but it sounds like it's going to fall on deaf ears. Her mother sure is a piece of work, good grief. As depressing as it may seem, I don't think that there is much that you can say or do to change her mind. Maybe point out that if it is true love, it can wait until she graduates, and that this is a decision that will affect her for a long time, regardless of how long the relationship lasts. She has a full ride scholarship. Does she have a job? Does she have a job set up where she's moving? Does she realize that financial aid is a PITA, and she may have to end up paying for books and stuff out of pocket? Does she realize how expensive those books are? The commenters are right in that it's her decision, but maybe giving her some cold hard facts? Have a receipt for textbooks? I'm sure you can find one. Will make her rethink. This seems like the best chance of working. Asking why she doesn't think her true love could make it long distance. Honestly, this is the kind of thing where you just need to let it play out. You've already voiced your concerns, that's the best you can do sometimes. If you push harder, then you'll only be pushing her away. Besides, who are you to say that this won't work out well in the long run? And OP replies, It's not that I think they won't work out. They might, and I'd be very happy. It's the fact that she'll be giving up her full scholarship to go. And no, her family can't afford it. When we talked to her about transferring, she mentioned that even if she got a transfer student scholarship, she'd have to take out $20,000 to $30,000 in loans. It's an out-of-state school. Her mom is willing to co-sign because true love, 
but I think that if it is true love, they can wait another year until she graduates. Then again, I might not be able to do anything. I at least want to sit her down one more time, so I feel like I did everything I could if this blows up. Why can't he transfer to her school? She shouldn't get into the habit of being the only one to sacrifice in a relationship. If she is as gullible as you say, she needs someone who is a giver, not a taker. It's ultimately her life though. If she values love more so than financial advantages, then that's her call to make. I agree with your assessment, but if I were you, I would respect your friend's wishes, however much I detest it. The role of a great friend is to give advice and support, even when they don't take your advice. And OP replies, I'm definitely going to talk to her again, but I will have to support her if she chooses to follow him. Thanks. You don't have to support her if you don't want to. Maybe try approaching her, saying that if it is true love, they'll still be together if they wait it out and do the long distance for the remaining two years. That's when someone really loves you. They support doing what's best for you, even if it means that they can't be near each other 24-7. Finishing university where she is would give them both a better start at their life together if it isn't started with debt. And now on to the update. So, just found this throwaway account and thought that I should give an update. My friend and I are now 25, and we're still close. She did transfer schools and lose her scholarship. She also graduated late because of the transfer. In all, it cost her more than 30k in student loans, which she regrets. Things did not work out between her and her boyfriend. He really wanted to live a party boy lifestyle with her at home to cook and clean up after him. They broke up one year after she transferred. She still had a semester left, which was really difficult and lonely because she had no friends aside from him and his social circle. After graduation, she got a job as a teacher in her hometown. So she does have a way to pay back the loans. She's pretty happy. She's now engaged to a different guy that she started dating around two years ago. They got together right after she moved home. Yes, it's fast, but they live together with no issues. They aren't going to start planning a wedding until the pandemic eases up. She's less gullible now and more skeptical of her mum's advice. Her experience really opened her eyes to the consequences of her choices. TLDR, my friend learned an expensive lesson, but her life turned out okay. She ended up where she probably would have if she didn't transfer, but 30k in a hole. She'll be the first to tell you to prioritise your future over a short-term relationship. Now in the comments, Plenty PK says, My college roommate did the same thing with a full ride for grad school. Star-crossed reconnection with a hometown guy and everything. Surprise, didn't work out either. I did the exact opposite. I accepted a great job at a prestigious national lab because my boyfriend of four plus years worked there. We dated for two more years and then broke up. I used the papers I wrote there to propel me into a well-respected PhD program working for the top guy in my field who remains my mentor today, said no one ever. Ah. I'm glad it all worked out for her OP, but that last comment made me laugh too hard. No kidding, turning down a full scholarship for a boyfriend isn't the smartest move. I was against it the whole time. I was worried I'd lose her friendship over it, but she respected my honesty. Lol, I know you were. Most people with common sense wouldn't have approved of what she did, especially for true love that just couldn't wait a year, hence why the last sentence was so funny. We know it was stupid. It was said about her three years ago. It's said every damn day to a new person on this site. The fact that the mum actually encouraged her to do this. It's the kind of thing you might expect from a 22-year-old, but not an adult woman with grown children. But the 22-year-old in this story is exactly what you'd expect if they were raised by an adult woman who would encourage something like this. Lol? I guess she had to get it from somewhere. The mum probably was the exact same, but just never grew out of it and raised her daughter that way too. Did her mum ever admit that it was a mistake to pour romantic comedy nonsense into her daughter's head? 
I'm still not her mum's biggest fan, no. She's all into the romantic comedy nonsense with my friend's new relationship too, but my friend has stronger boundaries now and throws most of her mum's advice out the window. That her mum even suggested that made me wonder if the mum wanted to live vicariously through her daughter. That is the best lesson of all. Her mum likely will be in her life unless they have a falling out. Learning your parents aren't always right and to take advice with a grain of salt is valuable. Posted by user Lil Emez Metalhead, titled, My friend, 27 female, has been actively avoiding me, 30 female, and I don't know what to do about it. I want to protect my feelings, but I don't want to be dismissive of her mental health issues. This is a non-romantic post. Background. I met B about three years ago. She is married to my husband's best friend. She has a history of mental issues and has experienced a lot of loss in her early life, as well as eating disorders and extreme anxiety about being abandoned. She hasn't had much luck with therapy or with psychiatrists. Until the last few months, we talked frequently and spent time with each other at times, but never outside of the range of our husbands in a circle. She's always gave off a friendly vibe, telling me that she loves me like family and we always supported each other. B has been distant lately. Her depression has been taking over every aspect of her life. I would check in on her once a week to see how she was doing. The pandemic hasn't made things better, especially since we both work at local hospitals. She went radio silent after my birthday, last June, and I haven't been able to talk to her since. I've been pretty patient. I texted her, reacted to her social media, and sent her messages. No response. I asked her if she honestly wants to be friends with me because I want to be friends with her. Haven't had any responses. Her husband would initially give me excuses like, she never has her phone on her. And later, it became, well, you asked her about how she's doing a lot and that upsets her. I decided to start changing my attempts to start a conversation like sending photos of my pets and telling her other small things. If she is having a huge mental health crisis, I empathise. However, she hasn't responded to me at all in a month's time. I don't know what to do because I don't want to just show up to her house or send her a card in the mail. What should I do? TLDR, B has been ignoring me for a month and her husband has been giving me mixed signals as to why. She has a history of mental illness, so she could be in a dark place but I feel that she's flat out ignoring me. Should I cut the cord or try harder? Now in the comments, Crypto Zoykin says, You have already made it clear that you care about her well-being. Probably best to back off now and let her contact you when she is ready. And OP replies, Thank you. She may not initiate contact with me or desire to reach out, but I'm okay with that. And Beepboop15 says, this resonates with me so much. I, 24 female, made a post about it a while ago, in which I've been ghosted by my best friend of more than six years for a year now. Literally just no responses to any message or call or anything. Her family just tells me she's been busy with work, but I know she suffers from heavy depression just like your friend, and had told me before disappearing that she was feeling like the worst she's ever felt so I know it has to do with her mental health, but it just hurts so much being ignored. And I tried different approaches like you, and I actually did send her a card through the mail for Christmas, and nothing. I finally just sent her one last long text message a month ago, saying that I loved her, but I needed to let her go for my own good, but that I would be here with open arms if she ever decided to come back. I still mourn our friendship, so I definitely feel you and truly hope that your friend starts feeling better and will eventually reach out to you again. And OP replies, Thank you. I know it is likely that she won't reach out again, but I go to therapy regularly, so I'm hoping to make peace with it. And now on to the update. It's been over six months since this issue initially started. 
Turns out, B was upset with me because I sent her too many videos from other pages of cute animals on social media, and it was overwhelming her. I think this was more of a breaking point issue, probably due to my excessive friendliness. Instead of hearing this from her, I heard this from her husband. She wanted to resolve things with me, but her husband also talked her out of doing that out of fear of her being mean to me. My husband and B's husband are close friends, so this has complicated things some. I am mildly annoyed that so much drama transpired over something that could have been easily discussed. However, everything I know about what she said and how she feels, I have heard from others, mainly her husband. I empathize because I fear confrontation, but if she had been upfront with this, my feelings would be fine. Now my feelings are hurt, and I have been self-isolating so I don't upset others. Thankfully, I'm seeing my therapist more often to deal with this, because I have this lingering feeling of bothering others, and now it's just amplified. I know it's not an exciting update, but I'm just baffled with how everything turned out. Edit. I haven't spoken to her since my initial post six months ago, and have not attempted to. I don't plan on rekindling a friendship either, because her husband said she doesn't want to reconcile. Now in the comments, the penultimate Rollo says, I know I felt like, does anyone actually like me? Am I just annoying and someone they tolerate? To be honest, no matter what the mental health issue, she and her husband have handled this shockingly bad. I would just stop communicating with her on a personal level and demote her to the kind of a colleague level. Like, enjoy chatting at group gatherings, but maybe don't bother letting her into the emotional level. I have a friend that I do this with, and it's so much better now. I get to enjoy some fun stuff, but have no expectations or disappointment. I'm sorry though, it totally sucks. And OP replies, My husband and I agree that this situation was handled badly. B's husband is aware that it wasn't handled well either, but he never talks about her to my husband. She has me blocked on social media, and most likely her phone, so I cannot reach out to her. I'm handling it as best as I can. I'm just struggling with being punished for something that should not have become a problem. I think you need to reframe this in your head because, from an outsider's perspective, you've lost nothing. This isn't punishment. This is the profound gift of freedom from a friendship that has been toxic for a long time. Okay, she beat you to pulling the plug, but thank goodness it's over now. Keep reminding yourself of this. Focus on the positives of no longer having to deal with her issues. Nourish friendships that elevate you and reciprocate your efforts and care. Consider evaluating your other friendships to really decide if they are mutually satisfying. Above all, Mental health issues do not give you license to take things out on friends and loved ones. Turf.com says, If she gets overwhelmed by that, I don't think she's mentally stable enough to maintain friendships. It wouldn't be good for the health of the person on the receiving end of her instability. If I were you, I'd decline having regular contact with her for now. Keep your distance. Only be open to a potential friendship once she's acknowledged her issues and has them under control, if you still want to be friends by then. Seriously, I can only imagine the amount of friends she's unfollowed and muted on social media without telling them, hey, you're upsetting me slash pissing me off. She's a bit, bit in need of therapy. Right? I'm actually furrowing my brow thinking... She's ignoring you because of sending pictures of cute animals? I can't even begin to understand that thought process. I mean, it depends on how many cute animal photos. I love a good cat picture, but if someone was sending me multiples an hour all day, every day, that would be too much. It sounds like OP had already been overwhelming her. Then B was trying to withdraw and get some space, by OP's own admission in her first post, she switched to the animal video tactic after a bunch of other methods didn't work, so they weren't exactly innocently sent videos in excitement, but a deliberate, if well-meaning, manipulation method in trying to get B to talk to her again. Neither of them handled this well. B should have stated her need for space, but 
OP should have taken the hint and given it to her a long time ago. Boundary stomping with friendliness is still boundary stomping, and in a lot of ways, sucks more than the stomper being flat out mean. Because it does put B into the position of being the one who looks and feels irrational for telling someone sending cute animal pictures and nice behavior is a problem. Which means any outsiders react like this thread here if OP recounts the story. Obvious pushy behavior that OP admits to gets overlooked because wow, who has a problem with getting cute animal pictures? What a whack job. And OP replies to that saying, I am well aware that I could have pushed her away with being overwhelmingly friendly. With that being said, the fact that it took several months for me to find out what I did is really upsetting. You say she could have just told you and you wouldn't have been hurt, but your reaction to learning one person felt overwhelmed is to completely self-isolate yourself so you don't ruin every other relationship in your life by acting overwhelmingly friendly. That's a pretty dramatic response, and not the actions of someone who other people can easily just talk to or set boundaries with. Are you generally prone to self-destructive behavior when someone upsets you? Because it sounds like it from your current reaction, and B's worry that talking to you would hurt you. And OP replies, I used to participate in that kind of behavior, but that was many years ago. I still work on myself daily, and I still go to therapy. I know looking back on this, there are ways that I could have handled it better, and I'm working on myself every day to avoid isolating myself. G'day there guys, and that's the end of today's episode. I do hope you enjoyed it, and were entertained by today's bloody good content. As always, I want to do a quick shout out and a thank you to all my channel members and Patreon subscribers. Your beautiful faces and names will be up on screen right now. Haven't forgot about you guys, sorry I was taking a little break there. So yeah, if you see yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. If you want to be on this screen, there's links down in the description below where you can sign up and help support the channel and all future projects that I'm going to be doing on this one. With all that said, I hope you guys have an amazing day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to. I'll see you in the next episode, and I do hope you enjoy it. Thank you.